And so 2024 is what we are about. In 2016, we went for elections and um, we lost. And so we handed over power to the next administration, dutifully, the way we should. I say that NDC has a greater commitment to Ghana's democracy than any other political party. We must be midwife to that democracy. It was us who did the consultation with uh, Justice D.F. Uh, 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 National Development Commission and came to the determination that Ghanaians wanted to return to a multi party democracy. And then we set up the consultative assembly. And for those of you who know, when we set up the consultative assembly, our colleagues on the other side boycotted it and said they couldn't sit in the same assembly with butchers and tailors and hairdressers and market women to draw up a constitution. And that the constitution drawing is a job for lawyers. And so they boycotted it. And the ordinary people of this country, the butchers and dressmakers and drivers, TUC, and wine cappers, all of them, are the ones that drew up the 1992 Constitution. And the 1992 Constitution is the longest lasting Constitution in the history of Ghana. And I'm just saying, it's the best Constitution we've ever had in the history of Ghana. And that is why the Fourth Republic of this country. That is why the Fourth Republic of this country has been the longest lasting republic that we have had. The Fourth Republic. And then President Kofo took over and he did eight years. And then President Mills of Blessed Memory came into office and did three years and a half. And I served the remaining term because um, God called him. And I stood for 2012, won the election, did four years. And as God will have it, our comrades took over. And Anadu Dampa Akofado became the president. He's been president for seven and a half years now. I've always said that the Fourth Republic and democracy is like a relay. You run the side of the race and you hand over the baton. And we have done that successfully. Every government has added its little contribution to advancing our democracy and advancing our economic development. And so I happily handed over the baton to Nana Akufuado. Unfortunately, instead of continuing the race forward, he has run in reverse. I'm sure many of you have seen that video <laughs> where the children were handing over the button and when this one got it, he started running back. <laughs> that is what has happened to our country. I'm sure you're more familiar with what has happened than I am because we've been away for some time. But things are not good. Things are not good. And it's not like we didn't see it. We saw it, we elected them, we warned them, but they won't listen. And today, our country is in a very difficult place. Let nobody deceive you. And when the finance minister says things are turning around, he doesn't know what he's talking about. Things are getting harder. Everyday prices of goods and services are going up. And as we were just told, today, there are, there's widespread load shedding across the country because of $20 million, that's all. We have a pipeline where we do a reverse flow from our western field because we have excess gas there. So we reverse flow the gas through the West Africa pipeline to the east so that the thermal plants in the east can have gas. And we owe $20 million for that reverse flow, which we haven't paid. And so the gas has been shut. And so the thermal plants in the east cannot get gas. That is the simple explanation for it. Pay the money, they said, oh, We've talked to them and we've reached an agreement. But what I notice is everything they do now is to kick the ball further down the road.
And so we want to find out what agreement have you reached? Is it that you are postponing the payments, you are paying a down payment, you are pushing the rest to the next government that is coming? Because that's exactly what's happening with the debt restructuring. They're just postponing a market order. And in a high to just push it there and hand it over to whoever comes. And so we also have our eyes open. We're looking at the projections and things. And um, we spoke to the IMF and we said, look, we must know all the agreements we're entering to with this government. Because the IMF program is going to transcend regimes. And the new government is going to inherit whatever agreements that you sign with this government. And so we must know exactly what you're, you're looking at. And so we have our team that is looking at the agreements, looking at what the projections are going to be, so that we know exactly what we're going to inherit. It's not going to be easy. And I tell my colleagues that what we're going into, I wonder if we really understand what we're going into. Um, it's going to take a lot of work to build back to where we were at before these people came. At a time, they were in opposition, and it's easy when you're in opposition to think that governance is easy. And I remember at one time, they had kept up with this game. Competent Mahama administration, incompetent Mahama administration, and I warned them, I said, look, you don't know what it is to be president. You don't know how it is to govern. And so you just keep on incompetent, incompetent. I think today they have learned the hard way. Uh, it's not a walk in the park. But unfortunately, we could have said, we told you so. But the effects are so serious that we don't want to gloat in self vindication but I hope they've learned their lesson so that tomorrow they don't think that it is just easy and it's easy to govern a country like that or any country. So we have the elections ahead of us 2024. Um, as was said, they are not a group that goes down easily. They will take advantage of anything to try and stay in power, especially now, because they don't want the day of accountability to come. And so it is better for them to be succeeded by the vice president, because if he succeeds, he will cover their backs. But the people of Ghana deserve to hold them accountable. And the only way they can be held accountable is in the new office. And that is why, for the sake of our children and our grand great grandchildren, we must make sure that this NPP administration leaves office so that we can hold them accountable. We can see and investigate the wrong things that they have done. Indeed, some of their own people who have been alienated and marginalized are the ones who come to me and say, look, we are disappointed in our government and it is our hope that when you come, you are not going to do further for all and that you must hold our people accountable yes. and that if you don't, we will combine with your own NDC people and come and kick you out of that <laughs> black star house. <laughs> and so we have a duty to our nation to hold them accountable but not keep our concentration there. We have a country to govern, and we have a country to bring back on track. And so, we have done it before. We have the experience. We have managed that country before. We understand the issues. Even in opposition, we've been following and advising. If they only just listen to us, because as far back as 2018, 2019, we told them that you were going down the wrong track. I accused the finance minister directly of creative accounting. I said, you're not telling the world the true story of the economy because I knew that the way you was going, the economy would crash. Because if you take, and for all of you who do accounting, 
if you balance your books, but then liabilities that will accrue to you, you put them as footnotes and appendixes, and you don't add them to the calculation of your accounting, and you say, my budget has balanced. You're just deceiving yourself. And you're postponing D-Day. And that's exactly what he was doing. And we raised the red flag. We said, look, he's not adding ESLA PLC. ESLA PLC is a creature of government. It was created by government, and we went ahead and borrowed on the revenues of ESLA PLC and spent the money. So what is that? It's a debt. You went and collapsed nine indigenous banks and microfinance companies, 300 microfinance companies, and guaranteed their deposits to a tune of almost 22, 23 billion CDs. What is it? It's a liability of government. You owe the IPPs $1.3 billion. Whose liability is it? It's government. And yet when you do your budget, you come and tell the, the parliament that, oh, we have less than 5% budget deficit. And that's just because you haven't added these other ticket items. And so it was obvious that he was just postponing at a time to come when it was really to catch up. And really to caught up when COVID came. And you couldn't hide those liabilities anymore. And so once the liabilities were added, debt to GDP that was being stated at about 72%, apparently was 103%. And so, even when the reality caught up, we said, look, you better go to our multilateral partners quickly and get an agreement. Go to IMF, go to IMF before it gets worse. We won't go to IMF today, won't go to IMF tomorrow, won't go to IMF as long as everybody remains in power. We're proud in the country, we're this, we can manage our own affairs. Da, 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 da. <laughs> and as an economist said, you either walk to the IMF or else you'll be carried in an ambulance to the IMF. They were not even carried in an ambulance. They were carried on a stretcher to the IMF. And so today our economy is in intensive care. And they are giving it drips, blood transfusions and everything. Oxygen to try and make it survive. And so, what it means is that these guys have destroyed what we have all been building. And it's made things very hard for individuals and for businesses. Businesses have been slapped with huge taxes. If you go to Ghana today, any of you who has come back recently, go to the supermarket and buy anything and let them give you the receipts and calculate the tax component of what you bought. It's more than 33, 35% of the costs of whatever you purchase is going to be taxes alone. And that's all because of a populist government. Free water, free lights. COVID, people, their supporters were standing on the street and pouring water down themselves and using soap and said, the government that has given free water. And I remember the see Pratt said, hey, there's nothing for you. This thing, you pay for it. As soon as they finish the election, 1% COVID level. It says, oh, but why COVID level? He said, so the water and this thing, you we were laughing, we think it was for free. But that's the kind of government that we have. I mean, they believe that propaganda can take care of everything. For them, they don't believe in that. You can fool all the people some of the time. You can fool all the people some of the time. But you can fool all the people all the time. They don't believe in that. They believe that you can fool all the people all the time. And so forget it's about propaganda, it's about everything.